my wonderful subscribers. I hope you're doing well today. I am. I'm pretty chipper, as you can tell. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos still. Thank you so much for all your comments. I've just been kind of in the process of house hunting, so I really haven't been able to get to the comments. So don't think I don't read them. I do read them. I just haven't been able to get to them. So thank you guys so much for understanding. Uh, we're going to pick back up where we left off in the last video on The Fall of Five by Pitticus Lore. Chapter 23. John holds the Illinois ID card up to the light. He bends it between his fingers and picks up the picture with his thumbnail. Then he turns to me, smiling wide. This is great work, Sam. As good as the ones Henry used to make. Finally, I sigh relieved. A dozen similar ID cards, all with some minor defects, sit in a pile next to Sanders' main computer. All of them have John's face along with the name John Kent. You should make one for yourself, John says. Maybe your alias could be Sam Wayne. Sam Wayne? Yeah, like Bruce Wayne, Superman's buddy without any powers. That's why you chose Kent for my last name, right? It's a Superman reference. I didn't think you'd catch that, I reply. Never knew you were into comics. I'm not, but we aliens like to keep tabs on each other. John comes around to the other side of the desk, skirting one of the workshop's many junk piles to look at the screen over my shoulder. All this was already on Sanders' computer? Yep. I reply, guiding the cursor across the various forgery programs and government database hacks installed on Sanders' machine. It was just a matter of accessing them, and uh, figuring out how to use them right. I point to the pile of screwed up IDs. Awesome, John says. Let's get new identities ready for everyone. It'll make traveling to pick up Five's chest easier. Can't Eight just teleport you down there? John shakes his head. He can only do long ranges between those massive Lorelite stones he mentioned last night, and with short range, there's too much risk of being spotted appearing from thin air, or of him teleporting us into a wall. Yeah, that would hurt. I adjust the, web the webcam that's hooked onto the monitor so that it's pointing at me. When my image appears on screen, I take a second to fix my hair and then flash my cornea smile. Nice, John says, still watching. What can I say? I'm photogenic. I always wondered why Picture Day at Paradise High was called Sam Good Appreciation Day. And now you know. <laughs> I drag and drop the picture into one of the programs Sander installed, and it immediately gets to work resizing my pick for a new driver's license. So, I begin lamely, not having a better segue prepared. There's something I've wanted to ask you. Yeah? What's going on with you and Six now that Sarah's, uh, not a traitor? John laughs. We actually talked about it on the way to Arkansas. I think we're cool now. It was kind of awkward for a while. I'm with Sarah, though. 100%. Okay, cool, I reply. Keeping things nonchalant, although that doesn't stop John from elbowing me. She's all yours, he says, and my face gets hot right away. That's not why I was asking. Uh-huh, sure, John says, picking up a loose bolt from the desk and tossing it to me. You're gonna act like that? Like you, like you forgot about what happened before she went to Spain? Her saying she likes, likes you? Her kissing you? I shrug, flicking the bolt back in John's direction. Hmm, that sounds familiar, but it wasn't on my mind at all. Even as I say this, I think back to that hug Six gave me when we reunited in Arkansas. My face gets even hotter. Luckily, before John can mess with me further, my dad enters. He smiles at us as he wipes his greasy hands off on an old rag. He looks worn down from working on the machinery in the lecture hall. But there's a pleased smile on his face. Digging into some loric belt technology sure beats wasting away in a Mogadorian prison. How'd it go? I ask him. The human mind is an amazing thing, Sam, my dad muses. When you have gaps in your memory like I do, you come to better appreciate the things you do remember. The way your hands just repeat a task you've done enough times, without even needing to think. Who needs legacies when we have the infinite power of the human mind at our disposal, eh? I wouldn't mind some legacies, actually, I say, glancing over at John. Sorry. He can't get philosophical about science -y. He can get so philosophical about science -y stuff. I don't mind at all, John says, his smile wistful as he looks between me and my dad. The repairs aren't easy, my dad continues. Sanders' work is impressive, and I've, uh, been out of the game for a while. Everything works like I remember. It's all just much smaller. The lectern might be too intricate for me to get fully operational. I've been able to make some repairs to the controls. Some of the body booby traps should be operational as well. It's not perfect by any means, but it's something. I'm sure it's great, John says. Anything that could improve our training will help. I'd like to get a team session together before we go to Flo 
Nine flings open the f workshop door with enough force to almost tear it loose from its hinges. He takes one big stride forward and then violently kicks a stack of junk, sending circuit boards and scrap metal flying in our direction. I start to shield my face, but John catches the temper tantrum shrapnel with his telekinesis. What the hell? John yells. Calm down! Nine looks up, startled, like he didn't even realize we were in here. Sorry, he mutters, then stomps over to John. He holds out a hideously swollen right hand. Heal this! Damn, I say. What happened to you? I punched five in the head. Nine says matter-of-factly. It didn't go well. Well, <laughs> well, that didn't take long, I think. Nine's been trying to get under five skin since we walked in the door. I'm actually more than a little surprised it's Nine in here needing the healing. That's not how I would have imagined that fight going. I keep my mouth shut, letting John deal with his wounded attack dog. He takes Nine's forearm, maybe with a little more force than necessary, and holds his hand out over Nine's messed up fist. But he doesn't heal him. You've got to chill out, John says, locking eyes with Nine. No punching our friends. No challenging them to rooftop fights. No bullshit. Nine stares John down, and for a second, I think he might take a swing at him, too. He doesn't. Instead, he slaps on a big grin as if the whole thing was one big joke. I'm like the shittiest welcoming committee ever, huh? Back in paradise, Sarah's mom used to bake stuff for anyone new that moved into the neighborhood. Maybe you should try... Maybe you should have a have or maybe you should have to bake some cookies every time you punch someone, I suggest. John laughs as he sets about healing Nine's hand. I love that idea, Sam. I am not baking, Nine growls, fixing me with a death stare. My dad clears his throat. We all look over at him, standing straight, his hands folded behind his back. It's the same look I'm sure his students at the university used to get. Nine. I was wondering if you might want to assist me with the lectern hall. With what? Your CPAN built the equipment. I was hoping you might have some insight into how it works. Nine laughs with disbelief. Yeah, uh, sorry, dude. I left the nerd stuff to him. I see, my dad replies, undeterred by Nine's bluster. In that case, perhaps we could figure out how it works. As a team. Unless you're too busy punching things. To my surprise, Nine actually considers this. I see the same wistful look on his face that I noticed on John's face earlier, and it occurs to me that they're both thinking about their CPANs. I realize then what my dad is doing, reaching out to the angry guy, trying to get him involved in a project, after school special style. It's a total parent move, but I admire it. All right, yeah, Nine says. It's my shit. I should know how it works. Lead the way. As Nine and my dad head into the lecture hall, John turns to me. Your dad's a good guy, he says. We might have to make him an honorary CPAN. Thanks, I reply, my smile brittle. A cold knot of dread forms in my stomach because I know what happens to CPAN around the guard. What happens to adults. It's a dark thought, I know, but I can't suppress it. I've only just reunited with my dad. I don't want to lose him. Without realizing it, I've started rubbing the scars on my wrists. John must, intu must intuit what I'm feeling because he puts a hand on my shoulder. Don't worry, Sam, he says. We're not going to lose anyone else. I hope he's right. Chapter 24 so when, so when are you guys going to Florida? Sarah asks me casually, like it's a vacation I've been planning. I'm beat. It's a good kind of tired, though. Today was a productive day. No time spent running and hiding. No time wasted. We cataloged the contents of our chests. Sam managed to print up some solid fake IDs, and I got some training time in the newly refurbished lecture hall. Two days from now, I hope. I answer Sarah, dropping down to the floor to knock out a quick set of push-ups before bed. I want to get everyone together in the lecture hall tomorrow to see how the team looks. I don't expect much trouble recovering Five's chest, but you know, you never know. It'll be a good to have everyone get some experience together, and then we're off. Sarah's gone quiet. I look up at her. She sits on the edge of the bed, our bed. Still weird to even think that. Her legs curled beneath her. She wears her pajamas, a v-neck gray t-shirt, and a pair of my boxers. She's watching me, but isn't paying attention to a word I'm saying. I clear my throat, and she blinks her eyes, flashing a lopsided smile. Sorry, you distracted me with push-ups. What were we talking about? I sit down on the bed next to her, curling my fingers through her just-braided hair. She smiles at me, and suddenly I'm not so tired anymore. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about what could happen with us sharing a bed. Things have been hectic since we've been in Chicago, between Ella's nightmares, Five's call for help, and my own insomnia. Plus, with everyone else sleeping in the next rooms, it isn't, hasn't felt right. Florida, I remind her. Oh yeah, Sarah says. You lived there for a while, didn't you? 
Yeah, a few months. Why? Just trying to fill in some blanks. There's still a lot I don't know about you, John Smith. She puts her hand on my cheek, lets her fingers run down my neck, and then along my shoulder. Also, talking helps distract me from what I really want to do. My hand slips through her hair, down the back of her neck, and slowly dances across her spine. Sarah shivers a little, and I slide closer, bending my head down towards hers. You know, it seems pretty quiet tonight. I think everyone's asleep. Right on cue, someone knocks on our door. Sarah's eyes widen, and she laughs, her face flushed. Is horrible timing one of your legacies? I open the door to find Six waiting, her coat on, like she's just come in from front side. She glances over my shoulder at Sarah, then catches my exasperated look and cracks a devilish smirk. Oops, she says, interrupting. It's cool, I say, playing it off. What's up? You need to come to the roof and see this. BK's going nuts. We pull on some clothes over our pajamas and then race down the hall after six. I can hear BK before I'm even at the staircase leading to the roof. The sound he makes is like a cross between a wolf howling and an elephant blowing through its trunk. It's loud and, sh and soulful. Not a bad sound at all, but totally not of earth. He won't shut up, Nine says, as soon as I emerge onto the roof. He rubs his temples, probably exhausted from using his telepathy to cr try to call me BK. He's still pretty much in beagle form, although his shape bulges and stretches erratically, like he might change into something else at any second. The antler from H's chest is clenched in his teeth, the sound not at all muffled by it. Flecks of drool drip down the antler and into BK's fur. He stands up on his hind legs, his snout pointed at the moon, the oddly mel melodic noise flowing out of him. It looks like he's in some kind of trance. It teleports in from downstairs. I've got Sam and Malcolm monitoring emergency channels just in case some noisy neighbors call the cops, he says. I don't know what's gotten into him, John, but I think it's got something to do with that antler. No shit, Six says. She snaps her fingers at BK. Quiet, Bernie Kosar. BK doesn't even seem to notice. I spot Marina over the edge of the rooftop using her night vision to keep an eye out for anyone that might spot us. Luckily, we're high enough and Chicago is loud enough that I don't think anyone will hear BK. Even so, I don't want to take any chances. Did you try did you try taking the antler from him, I ask? Yeah, Nine replies. He didn't like that, growled at me and wouldn't let go. I didn't want to hurt him. That doesn't sound like BK, Sarah says, her eyes widening with concern. Think this is some kind of chimera nightmare? Sixon suggests. I shake my head. All this weirdness with BK started when he got hold of that antler. It doesn't seem like anything in our chest should work against us. Even my bracelet, which hurt like hell initially, turned out to be helpful. There should be a rational explanation for this. Where's Ella? Sarah asks. Could this be like what's happening to her but for Chimera? Sleeping right through it. Oh. <clears throat> Sleeping right through it, Marina replies, and this seems totally different. I reach out with my telepathy. Bernie Kosar, you need to be quiet now, but don't get any response. Not seeing any other option but to try and rustle the antler away from him, I step forward. Before I take a second step, Bernie drops onto all fours, letting go of the antler, his howling echoes in my ears for a few seconds after it's over. I grab the antler with my telekinesis and pluck the slobber-covered thing out of the air. BK pants happily, looking around at everyone. I make eye contact with Nine, both of us patched, into BK telepathically. It's like he doesn't know what just happened, I say. Are you drunk, BK? Nine asks, mystified. BK bounds over to us, tail wagging. He's got the same look of dog euphoria that he gets when you've just come back from a really satisfying run outside. You freaked us out, I tell him. You know you were here, up here making all kinds of noise, right? BK sits down at my feet. Sarah crouches down to scratch his ears. Can you ask him what he was doing? Sarah says, looking up at me and Nine. Trying, I reply, and Nine nods too, squinting at BK. It's a lot of images and feelings, you know, not exactly words. Telepathic barking? Eight observes. Pretty much, oh, <clears throat> pretty much, replies Nine. He says, I pause, wanting to make sure I'm getting my interpretation of BK's thoughts right. He says he was calling the others. I hold up the antler. I guess that's what this is for. The others? Marina asks. You mean the chimera from Ella's ship? I guess so, I reply, looking down at BK. Do you think they heard you? BK rolls over onto his back, asking Sarah to rub his belly. I guess that's the chimera equivalent of a shrug. He doesn't know, I say. Nine shakes his head. Well, crisis averted. I'm going to bed. Can we have a night without screaming or howling, please? 
Everyone else follows Nine downstairs, leaving just Sarah, BK, and me. The night air is cool, and now that BK has stopped the noise, it's peaceful. I kneel down next to Sarah and put my arms around her. Cold? Not really, she says, smiling. But you can leave your arms. I see why you like it so much up here. We sit like that for a while, Sarah in my arms, both of us gazing out over the Chicago skyline. This is one of those perfect moments, the kind I need to save up and remember for when things get bleak. And then, because maybe Sarah's right and bad timing is one of my legacies, a dark shape detaches from the night sky and zooms towards us. Chapter 25 What is that? Sarah cries. I don't know, I reply, springing to my feet and instinctively putting myself between Sarah and the black blur that's descending on us. I fire up my lumen, feeling some comfort in the fresh heat, ready for anything. The dark form slows down. It's definitely a person, I realize. The shape lands gracefully on the other side of the roof, its arms raised in a gesture of peace. Five? Hi, guys. Er, hey, guys, Five says. You're up late. Did I scare you? What do you think? Sarah asks, gesturing at the fireballs still held in my hands. On edge, I finally let them dissipate. Five, wearing a black sweatshirt and pants, pulls down his hood so I can see his apologetic face. Shoot, sorry, I didn't think anyone would notice. I legitimately thought we were under attack for a, f a second there, so my words come out harsher than I mean them. Than I mean them to. What the hell were you doing? Just flying around. Sometimes I like to see how high I can go. I try to think of a response that won't make me sound too bossy. I'm all for training, but flying around the city of Chicago seems like a pretty stupid idea. Hiding in plain sight is one thing. Hiding while teenagers soar through the air around your base is another. Aren't you worried someone might see you? Sarah asks, taking the words right out of my mouth. Five shakes his head. No offense, Sarah, but you'd be surprised how little your people bother to look up. Anyway, it's night, and I'm in dark clothes. Trust me, guys. I'm cautious. Still, there are ca cameras to think about, airplanes, who knows what else, I say, trying not to sound like I'm lecturing. Five sighs deeply and holds out his hands like he's sick of arguing. On the heels of his run-in with nine earlier, I guess he doesn't want to make any more trouble. I'll stop if you want me to, he says. You should know that I'm getting better at it, though. Covering more distance. In fact, I could probably just swoop down to the Everglades and pick up my chest, but be back before breakfast. I like this can-do attitude from Five. He suddenly doesn't seem like the kind of guy we need to worry about passing up training for video games. Still, I shake my head. We'll go as a team, Five. We don't need to do anything alone ever again. Safety in numbers. You're right. Five yawns, stretching his arms out. All right, I'm going to turn in. The lecture hall first thing tomorrow, right? Right. Once Five has marched downstairs, I turn to Sarah. She's gazing up at the night sky, a tiny smile playing at her lips. I take her hand. What do you make of that? I ask her. She shrugs. If you could fly like that, wouldn't you? Only if you could fly with me. Sarah rolls her eyes, elbowing me gently in the ribs. Okay, cornball. Let's get to bed before anything else crazy happens. Chapter 26 Are you sure you're up for this? Ella nods her head as we walk towards the lecture hall together. She looks pale, dark circles under her wide eyes, like she's just gotten over a horrible illness. She made it through last night without any nightmares or screaming fits, but she still looks strained. I can do it, Ella says, straightening up. No one will think any less of you if you sit it out, I tell her. You don't have to baby me, she replies sharply. I can train just as hard as the rest of you guys. I nod, dropping the argument. Maybe some physical activity will be good for Ella. At the very least, it should tire her out enough so that she'll get some real rest. We're the last two to arrive in the lecture hall. Everyone stands in the middle of the room, dressed in workout clothes. Malcolm sits behind the lecture's console, examining the glowing buttons and levers through, the gla through his glasses. Nine claps his hands as when he sees us. All right, let's get started. Capture the flag time, baby. The ultimate test of teamwork and, um, ass-kicking ability. Six rolls her eyes and five stifles a groan. I stand next to eight, who flashes me a quick smile. I hope we end up on the same team. The rules are simple, Nine says. He gestures to the opposite ends of the gym, where he's mounted a pair of makeshift flags made out of old Chicago Bulls t-shirts. The first team to grab the other team's flag and bring it back to their side is the winner. You've got to be holding the flag at all times. No telekinesis. Also, no teleporting the flag back to your own side. Ahem. That means you, Eight. Eight smirks. No problem. I like a challenge. Piled on the floor are four Margadorian rifles that I grabbed on... Oh, 
Filed on the floor are four Mogadorian rifles that I grabbed on our way out of Arkansas. Figured we might want them for the, just this kind of exercise. I noticed Sam eyeing them hesitantly. What are those for? he asks. Each team is going to get two guns, explains John, jumping in. Malcolm has modified them so they're non-lethal, like stun guns. We always end up using their guns against the Mogs in battle. I figured this would be good practice. Also, we wanted to give you non-guard a fighting chance, says Nine, glancing at Sam and Sarah. Malcolm strides over for the, from the lecture, his hands clasped behind his back. I'll be, I'll be using the lecture hall systems to throw in some obstacles, he says. Remember, if anyone gets hurt, it's okay to call a timeout so Marina or John can heal you. Nine sighs, annoyed. There's no timeouts in real fight. There are no timeouts in a real fight. So let's keep wimping out and... To a minimum. Oh, let's keep whipping out to a minimum. John glances around, taking a less cavalier approach. Remember, this is just practice. We're not really trying to kill each other. John and Nine are captains, dividing us into two teams. John chooses six with his first pick, with his first pick, and Nine selects eight. Next, John takes five, and Nine takes Marina. John's third pick is. Bernie Kosar, and then Nine surprises everyone by choosing Sarah. I expected to go in the last round. There's no shame in it when the rest of the players are picking or packing superpowers. John picks me, probably wanting to divide the humans up evenly, which leaves Ella to join Nine's team. We huddle up at a, at the end of our of the gym. Uh, I'm sorry. We huddle up at our end of the gym. I'm going to turn invisible right away, Six says. If you guys can keep the rest of them busy, I should be able to make it to their flag no problem. John nods in agreement. I'm mostly worried about Eight. He's probably going to teleport to our side right away and make a go for the flag. Sam, I want you and Bernie Kosar on guard duty. I pat Bernie, Bernie Kosar on the head. His beagle fur transforms under my fingers into the smooth coat of a tiger. Um, yeah, we can handle it. Five, you and I will go on offense. Keep them busy while Six makes a break for it. Five looks over his shoulder to where the other team is having their own huddle. I want to take on nine. John and I exchange a quick look, both of us remembering yesterday's incident. It's not every day that someone volunteers to go head-to-head -head with the guard's battle-crazy lunatic. John shrugs. Sure, I'll have your back. Take it easy on him this time, okay? Five smiles, a cavalier look in his eyes. No promises. As our huddle breaks, I smile at six. Good luck out there. They'll never see you coming. So cheesy. Ugh, way to go, Sam. Oh, good luck out there. They'll, they'll never see you coming. So cheesy. Ugh, way to go, Sam. Six returns my smile quickly. She picks up one of the Mog Blasters and tosses it to me. Thanks, Sam. I'm counting on you to keep me covered, okay? I'll teleport over there, grab their flag, and make a break for it, Eight says, snapping his fingers. We won't even, ma we won't even break a sweat. Nine shakes his head. That's exactly what they'll be expecting. So yeah, do that. But it's just going to be a diversion. Sarah raises her hand, interrupting. Sorry, Nine. I just have to ask. What did you pick? Why did you pick me? Nine grins at her. You're my secret weapon, Heart. There's no way John's going to be effective with you making kissy faces at him. Kissy faces? Sarah repeats dryly, cocking the Mog Blaster she picked up. Do you want me to shoot you? I've seen, I've seen her shooting. She won't miss, I put in. I've watched Sarah shooting during training. I'm envious of her aim. I haven't been able to adapt, adapt to firearms nearly as quick as she has. They just make me nervous. I know she won't, Nine replies, getting serious. That's why she's going to be on six patrol. You know she's not, you know she's going to go invisible, Eight says. How are we supposed to stop that? That's where Ella comes in, Nine answers. Ella looks up from the blaster she's fiddling with, startled to hear her name. I think she was a little hurt at being picked last. Me? she asks, incredulous. Hell yeah, you! Nine replies. You're going to use your telepath telepathic mojo to pinpoint Six's location when she's invisible. Then you and Sarah light her up. Um, I'm not sure if I can do that. 
You located her in a big-ass base in New Mexico. This is just one room. Nine, sh Nine shakes Ella's shoulder encouragingly. Just try for me, alright? What am I going to be doing? I ask. Nine's got that proud look on his face. Oh, Nine's got that proud look on his face. I think I heard John refer to it as shit-eating that he gets when he thinks he's come up with something really juicy. He grabs my hand, and the little hairs on my arm stand up, an electric shock shooting through me. You, Marina, are my real secret weapon. Are both sides ready? Malcolm shouts from the lectern hall. From the lectern. The two teams stand about ten yards away from each other, close to the halfway point of the lecture hall. I glance around. Everyone on my side looks determined. Sam has already started sweating a bit, constantly adjusting his grip on his blaster. Across from me, Sarah shoots me an innocent smile as she brandishes her own blaster. My heart actually flutters in response, but I try to keep a serious face. Ready! I shout to Malcolm. Let's kick some ass! Nine shouts. Malcolm hits a few buttons on the lectern. The room hums to life around us. Sections of the floor begin to rise, creating blocks of cover for people to hide behind. A pair of medicine balls on chains swing loose from the ceiling. Nozzles produce, protrude from the, the walls, emitting bursts of smoke. Begin! Malcolm yells. For a moment, no one makes a move. Then, suddenly, my bracelet tingles to life. My red shield deploys just in time to block a burst of blaster fire. I look across the gym to see Sarah grinning at me, the muzzle of her blaster smoking. Sorry, baby, she yells before diving behind a piece of cover. <laughs> On one side of me, I see Six disappear into, the, into thin air. On the other side, Sam falls back towards our flag. Everyone is moving and suddenly it's just like a real battle, chaos, and there's Nine coming right for me. He's so fast that I barely have time to fire up my lumen and toss a small fireball his way. He leaps over it and crashes down on top of me. I fall backwards, my shield between the two of us, as he pins me to the ground. Nine pounds down on the shield with all his might. Dents form in the red material, but the shield holds. Frustrated, Nine leaps off me and my shield immediately retracts into my bracelet. I get back to my feet as quickly as I can, but even blocked by my shield, Nine's tackle knocked the wind out of me. I'm slower than I should be. You and your damn jewelry, Johnny! Nine grunts. I've been thinking about that thing ever since the last time we fought. It shocked me when I tried to yank it off by hand, so I wonder what what would happen if... I feel his telekinesis working. It's too late to do anything about it. He rips the bracelet right off my arm and flings it to the sideline. Ha! Nine yells gleeful. What's up now? Just as Nine's about to charge me, Five's rubbery arm slithers around his waist and flings him to the side. Nine springs back right back to his feet. Five stands in front of him, his rubber bouncy ball and chrome ball bearings turning over in his palms. He's, his skin transforms from rubber to solid steel. Ready to take another shot? Five asks. Oh, you have no idea, Nine growls back. <coughs> It happens just like John said it would. Almost as soon as I've taken cover by our flag, Eight teleports into the vicinity. Remembering the rules that he can't teleport the flag back across the room, I wait for Eight to snatch our flag off the wall. As soon as he does, I spray him with blaster fire. Eight yelps in surprise as my first shot electrifies his back, knocking him off his feet. He rolls over. Damn, Sam! Shooting a guy in the back? Not cool! I lever my blaster at him. Drop the flag! I don't think so, he says, and scrambles to his feet. I squeeze off a couple more shots, but Eight nimbly nodges them, dancing behind a piece of cover. Even so, I've got him pinned down, and he knows it. There's no way he's making it back across the room with our flag. Okay, Sam, try this on for size, Eight shouts. He shoves the flag into his mouth and shapeshifts into the form of some freakish ten-armed lion creature. He lumbers over the barricades towards me, swatting my blaster out of my hands with one clawed paw. Get him, BK! I yell. Before Eight can make another move, Bernie Kosar crashes into him. BK has shapeshifted as well. He's taken the form of a giant boa constrictor. He wraps his body around Eight, pinning Eight's arms to his sides. As Eight gasps for breath, the flag goes drifting out of his mouth. I snatch it up and pin it back to our wall. <clears throat> I watch as Sarah and Ella, both of them crouch down behind co cover close to our flag, point their blasters around the room. They're looking for a target they can't see. Come on, Ella, Sarah says hopefully. You can do it. Ella's face is pinched tight with concentration as she tries to locate Six telepathically. I hope this isn't too much exertion for her after yesterday's ordeal. Suddenly, Ella lights up. There! 
she shouts, and starts shooting her blaster into thin air on the right. Sarah follows suit, not really aiming, just trying to cover the same area as Ella. Most of the blasts sail harmlessly into the wall. After a few shots, though, one of the electric currents seems to stop in midair. It sizzles for a moment, and I see the outline of Six skeleton, almost like an x-ray, as it's knocked to the ground. Six's form reappears, looking surprised and confused that she's been caught out. She has to crab walk backwards to avoid another volley of shots from Sarah and Ella. Nice job, guys! I yell. Ella and Sarah take a moment to high-five before going back to aiming at six. I slink along the wall, watching the action from the sideline. No one's paying any attention to me yet, and that's just the way our team wants it. In the center of the room, Nine ducks under one of five steel-plated punches, grabbing Five's arm as it sails over his head and twisting it, wrenching it behind Five's back. He starts prying at Five's fingers. You might be made of metal, I hear Nine snarling, but you're still not stronger than me. Nine forces Five's hand apart. I can hear the metallic cling, clang as Five's ball bearing hits the floor. Immediately, Five's skin returns to normal. Nine shoves him away, right into one of the swinging medicine balls. It hits Five in the face, flipping him over. He groans, holding his head. Oops, says Nine. Looks like somebody lost his balls. I'm distracted by the fighting, so I almost step right on the bracelet that Nine tore off John's wrist. Figuring that might come in handy, I pick it up and snap it on my wrist. The icy feeling that spreads up my arm surprises me so much that I almost tear the thing off. I force myself to focus, sliding along the wall, staying out of view. Hey! yells John, and it takes me a moment to realize he's talking to me. You've got something that belongs to me! Both of John's fists glow with fire. He sends two burning orbs the size of basketballs sailing right towards me. I wouldn't have lobbed fireballs that intense at Marina if I wasn't sure the bracelet could handle them. The shield deploys in time to absorb them, but the force still knocks her against the wall, stunning her. I don't know what she's up to, sneaking around on the sidelines, but I'm sure it's part of some plan their team concocted. I glance over my shoulder to where Five is trying to scuttle backwards as Nine stalks him. Not good. I toss a fireball at Nine and he dives away. That gives Five a chance to regain his feet and create some distance between them. Of course, as soon as Five pops back to his feet, a bolt of blaster energy from Sarah puts him down again. Even though she's really screwing my team over, I can't help but be psyched at how well she's handling herself. Five's going to have to fend for himself for now. I need to figure out what Marina's up to and get my bracelet back. I race over to her just as she's pushed herself away from the wall. Her eyes widen when she sees me coming and she lashes out with a, quick to, a kick to my legs. I deflect the blow and pin her up against the wall, trying to pry the bracelet off her. What's your play, Marina? I'll never talk! She yells, getting into the spirit as she tries to headbutt me. Somebody's definitely been ta talking, taking dirty fighting lessons from Nine. John! I hear Sam shout from the other side of the room. Watch out! I know what's coming as soon as Sam yells, but there's no way to dodge it. L Eight teleports next to me, socking me in the jaw and knocking me away from Marina. As I turn to face him, he teleports behind me, kicking me in the back with both his feet. I stagger onto one knee. How am I supposed to defeat a teleporter in hand-to-hand -hand combat? I try to line up a shot on eight, but he's moving too fast. He keeps teleporting around John, hitting him with quick punch and then dis hitting him with a quick punch and then disappearing before John can counteract. Next to me, Bernie Kosar is still in the same boa form as when eight teleported out of his clutches. BK, go help him. I'll hold down the fort. He transforms into a huge hawk and soars out to help John. That leaves me alone guarding the flag. Our best chance for victory is still six. She's pinned down behind cover, with Sarah and Ella blasting away to keep, their, keep her there. I can see her clearly from my position. She's crouched, concentrating, a gentle breeze blowing through her light hair. Wait, where's that breeze coming from? Suddenly, I feel the air pressure change in the room. Six stands up from behind her barrier and thrusts her hands out towards Sarah and Ella. Ella's knocked backwards, somersaulting into the wall. Sarah falls back too, losing her grip on the blaster. Before they finish tumbling, Six is sprinting forward. Sarah reaches out to reclaim her blaster, but Six uses her telekinesis to send it skittering farther across the floor. Six jumps up, grabs the flag from the wall, and starts booking back to our side. Go, Six! I shout, feel, feeling a swell of pride. No one else in here would make this distinction, but I think of me, John, and Six as the originals competing against the newbies, and we're winning. As Six races back towards our side of the lecture hall, I keep my blaster leveled, ready to lay down cover fire. Eight is too busy trying to outmaneuver both John and BK to notice Six making a break for it. Nine, however, sees it happening. He tosses aside a battered and exhausted-looking Five and rushes to meet Six in the middle of the floor. I'm willing Six to turn invisible as Nine barrels towards her. She doesn't. In fact, it almost looks like she wants to take Nine on.
Nine swings first with a big overhand right hook that six easily sidesteps. Quickly, she rabbit punches him twice in the side, then attempts to sweep his legs out from under him. Nine leaps over Six's leg and grabs her wrist, then when he, she tries to hit him with the palm strike to the nose. With his free hand, Nine fires off a punch, but Six blocks the blow and hooks his arm. They grapple like that, each of them controlling one another's arms. Tw Six twists and struggles, but I can tell that Nine's starting to overpower her. For a moment, I'm frozen, watching Six and Nine fight. I guess it's just my natural instinct to stand back when the guard do battle, whether against Moggs or each other, but then I realize that I've got a clear shot at Nine. His broad back presents a perfect target. I could end this game right now. With just one pull of the trigger, Nine will drop and Six will be home free to make it back to our side. I line up my shot and fire. I don't know how he does it. Maybe it's just my crappy luck. Nine spins Six around just as I fire. My blast hits Six in the back and she crumples, spasming to the ground. The fly goes fluttering out of her grasp and Nine snatches it up. Six! I yell, startled. I'm sorry! I don't even see Marina coming. Now's your chance, Marina. Go! With Sam distracted, I sprint past him and grab their flag off the wall. He notices me just as I start running back to my side, keeping close to the wall. He tries to take aim at me, but I rip the blaster out of his hands using my telekinesis. He won't be a problem now. Five is laid out just a few yards away, looking groggy from tangling with nine. He won't be a problem either. It's John and Bernie Coaster I have to worry about. The two of them break away from eight when they see me running with the flag. Eight quickly teleports into BK's path, tackles him, and teleports with him to the other side of the room. That just leaves John. Nine tries to intercept him, but even though she's barely shaken off the effects of the blaster shot, Six manages to jut her leg out and trip Nine. That gives John a clear path towards me. I'm still wearing the, his bracelet, so he must know shoot, that shooting his fireballs at me won't work. Instead, he makes a beeline to cut me off. It's disorienting at first, using the anti-gravity legacy that Nine transferred to me at the start of the game. It's odd to feel the world shift sideways as I run up the side of the wall, my feet landing where it should be impossible. John's coming on so fast that he doesn't have time to adjust and crashes into the wall beneath me. I sprint across the ceiling to our home base wall and drop back down on the floor, holding the flag aloft. Part of me can't believe it. Even when Malcolm blows a whistle, signaling an end to the game. I did it. We won. Damn, I say, rubbing my hand where it bounced off, this wall, off the wall. Didn't see that coming. I can't help but smile as I watch Marina celebrate. Ella eight teleports across the room to wrap her in a big hug and Ella runs over to join in. Nine limps over to me, extending a hand. Good game, boss, he says. Yeah, you too, I say, clasping his hand. A couple weeks ago, the idea of losing to nine would have made me nuts. Now it doesn't seem to matter as much. The important thing is that both sides worked well together. The legacies on display, the fighting skills, everyone watching one another's back. I know it's only a game, but it makes me believe we can take on anything. Nine steps away from me to go help Five back to his feet. Five looks pretty beat up, bruises all down the side of his face, one of his arms hanging limp at his side. Nine makes a show of brushing him off. No hard feelings, Nine says, smirking. Yeah, sure, Five replies sullenly. I watch as Sam kneels down next to Six. She's still shaking off the electric jolt of the blaster. I can tell Sam is feeling guilty. Six, he begins. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Six waves him off. Forget it, Sam. It was an accident. Not really, interrupts Nine, strolling back over. Ella warned me it was coming telepathically. That's how I knew to turn around. We all turn to look at Ella. Her face is flushed from the excitement. She looks healthier than she did when we started, and more awake. As the others cross the room to congratulate Marina and get themselves healed, Malcolm strides over to me. He pats me on the back. Well done, he says. Not exactly. We lost. Malcolm shakes his head. That's not what I meant. Well done bringing this all together. You know what I saw while watching all this, John? I look at Malcolm, waiting for an answer. A force to be reckoned with. All right, that's it for this reading. That's the end of chapter 26. We'll pick up on chapter 27 in the next video. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. We are, we are getting close to the end of this book. It actually ends... So that's how much we have left. Not too much. We'll be getting there, and then we can start the next book. Yay! Okay, so that's it for now. Until next time, reading by Re. Bye!